Hello everyone, I am back. I am Linda with Linda's Rocky Mountain Finds, and I'm back with another haul video. Um, this weekend was not particularly good for me. Um, it's probably, I don't know, if it, I don't know, maybe it is the worst weekend so far this uh, this summer. But um, what I'm going to show you, I got from a variety of areas, uh, estate sales, garage sales, and an online estate auction. And um, yeah, I got some decent stuff. Uh, not, you know, not a bad weekend. Plenty of stuff to have to I've got a long list of stuff I've got to get listening today and tomorrow. But um, so anyway, uh, there is some clothing. I'll save that till later. Um, so those of you that don't like the clothing, uh, once I'm done with everything else, I'll let you know. And um, if you do like clothing, but you don't like the hard stuff, you can jump forward and find where I'm talking about the clothing. It's not a lot of clothing. But um, anyway, so let me get into it. Um, so we'll just start off with this. Picked up a brass, I think it's brass anyway, trivet. It's vintage. It's from 1953. It's King's Arms Trivet. And uh, it's real cool. You know, royal type uh, thing going on with it. Um, if you don't know what trivets are, you use them in the kitchen, put hot plates and stuff on. And uh, people collect them. Uh, I checked this one and it's got a little bit of value. It might be $15, $20. Um, we'll see. Uh, but I picked that up for, paid $2 on that. Had a brush, so. Next, if you're hearing something in the background, that's my cat scratching his uh, scrap post, a scratch post thing. Uh, picked up some Frisbee golf discs. Uh, if you don't know what Frisbee golf is, it is a, as the name would suggest, a combination of Frisbee and golf. Um, they don't use typical Frisbees. They are special, special uh, Frisbees. I'm going to show the back because it's got the previous owner's phone number and email address. So I'm not going to show the back of these. But um, I checked these ones. It's not a whole lot of value individually. I'll probably put them up as a lot. Um, but keep an eye out for Frisbee discs. They are kind of a thicker. You can tell they're different from a regular Frisbee. And some of them can be worth a lot. Um, I guess there's some high end, kind of like with golf clubs or whatever. Um, but even in lots of uh, lower end ones, you can sell them. So I paid a dollar a piece for these, so four dollars total, and uh, I should be able to get about twenty bucks out of them. Not a little bit more. I'll probably put them at auction starting at nineteen ninety nine plus shipping, and see what happens. Pick this up at an estate sale, Pimpernel. Let me take the paid a dollar for it. Pimpernel, they make, they're kind of an English style. They're vintage. They were popular, I think, in the uh, the 50s or the, yeah, the 50s, 60s. Um, they have placemats and then these are coasters. It's a winter scene. They don't look like they were ever used. Um, I've sold the placemats in the past. Uh, probably, eh, I, 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 they're kind of big and heavy, so they end up costing a lot to ship. So I don't usually pick up the placemats anymore. But I did pick these up because they're small. And uh, they're, it's not necessarily Christmas, but because of the winter's theme, I think they'll probably do well at Christmas. So paid a dollar for them and maybe get 10 15 out of them. Let's see. At the same garage sale I got the Trivet at, I picked up these two Dungeons & Dragons books. I think I've mentioned D&D before. Keep an eye out for D&D stuff. Um, these two, two books I got for $2 each, I think. Maybe $3. Um, they're in excellent condition. I don't know if they were ever actually used. The bindings were all still tight on them, you know, like a new, new book is. Um, but anyway, uh, I checked these. These do have, they, they're going for around 20 to 30 bucks each. So I'll do well on those. Another Sony CD player. This is a Discman. I got this at the thrift store uh, for a dollar. Uh, the Discmans don't do as well as the Walkmans. The Discmans are intended to come with this cassette thing that you put into your car cassette player, and it's a whole car kit type thing. So the Discmans don't do as well, but I only paid a dollar, and I should get about 15 to 20 out of it. And I already tested it. works. This I picked up at a garage sale, paid uh, $5 for it. It's a Sony 
um, TV weather FM AM radio Walkman. So it is a Walkman. Um, paid five and I forget exactly how much it was going for. I think around 30, 35 on Amazon. Uh, I haven't tested it yet. It also needs to be cleaned up a little bit. There's some label stickiness or something on it, but it's got the wrist strap. So once again, I always pick up the Sony Walkman, whether it's cassette players, radios, uh, CD players. Uh, pick this up. I actually paid a dollar for it. It's just a um, Super Nintendo game, Taz, Tasmania. It's not very good. I mean, it's like less than ten dollars. So um, I'll probably keep that as I get others and put them all into a lot. I uh, picked up at a garage sale. I got two huge boxes of recorded on VHS tapes. Um, sometimes those can sell. But then I also got this cribbage board, vintage cribbage board. Uh, real nice condition. It's got the little, it's got the instructions. And it's got the uh, pegs inside the, inside the holder. So I picked that up and along with all of the VHS tapes, I, uh, I paid $2 for everything. So <laughs> she wanted those VHS tapes gone. So, uh, Anyway, so I think uh, I think I can get about 10, 10 bucks out of this. Actually, I'm going to put up. I'm probably going to put up on Etsy. See if I can get a little bit more. See if I can get 15, 20 on Etsy. Uh, let's see. At the estate sale I was at, I picked up an old Monopoly game. Now, this was 50 cents. In essence, it ended up kind of being free because she the total amount of everything I got came to like 31.50, so she just didn't make it 30. So, but the nice thing about this is it's basically got three different sets inside it. Um, not of everything, um, not of the, the, the little figures. There's one set plus a couple extras, like two of the Scotty dogs. And, um, but it seems to have three sets of the property cards, three sets of the community um, chance cards, uh, community chest and chance cards, and the money. And then it's also got the instructions from uh, ones from the 50s and two are from the 60s. So it's got old original instructions. I'm going to put it all up as one big lot. Um, I occasionally pick up games to piece out the parts, but I'm trying to rein myself back from doing that because there really isn't a lot of value in it. I'm not saying don't do it. Definitely do it if you, you know if you're if you know you're looking. You're kind of new into getting this because you can find uh, board games all the time. Not every board game is it going to work, but the old Monopoly. Um, sometimes you can like save up all of the little metal figures and sell them in one big lot. Some of the metal figures that are um, much rarer can go for quite a bit. I have yet to find any. You can um, do a search on eBay and uh, search the Monopoly figures and um, filter to show, you know, highest to lowest of what is sold, and then you can see which ones are actually the hard to get ones. I think like there's a cannon that's good, battle, uh, some sort of battleship or something. I don't know. So you can check that on eBay, see which ones are good, and that's always kind of a good thing to do uh, when you're doing your, your research on eBay. Is if you have a particular type item that you're curious about, um, obviously search for that item. Um, Check the sell-through rate. So how you do that is you take the number of how many completed listings there are. So that's a combination of sold and not sold. And then you divide that and the um, how many actually sold, and you'll get a sell-through rate. Um, and I usually consider anything 50% and up as a good sell-through rate. Uh, it doesn't mean I won't get something that's less than that. But, you know, it's kind of nice to know how quickly something's typically going to sell, and that kind of helps gauge it. Um, so you want to check that when you're researching. Um, and then you can filter, you know, like I said, from high to low on a if you're looking at a particular shirt brand or type of item. And then you can see it helps you learn what of that type of item um, is the best seller. So you see the ones that sold for the most. Sometimes you need to take out 
lot because people will lot up shirts and that type thing. Um, and how you can do that, if you don't know, is in the search parameter, if you put in dash or negative, basically, and the word that you don't want coming up in your search, that will filter out all that stuff. So let's say I wanted to filter out lots. So you just you put in whatever you're searching for, let's say Brooks Brothers shirts, and then you put dash lots or dash lot. And you can do as many dash words that you want, and it'll filter out all those words. And uh, that's how you can get the search to come back without those types of items. So just a tip if you don't know that. Um, so anyway, so yeah, so that Monopoly game I'll put up as one big lot. Maybe there's some uh, somebody that specializes in um, trying to complete Monopoly games will want it all for their replacement pieces and stuff. So that's kind of my my thought on, on that game. And it was basically free. So uh, these two items I picked up on the Goodwill auction site. Um, they're little army players still in the box. The boxes are a bit dusty, somewhat rough. Um, but the brand, it's Guts. And um, I got these. Cat always decides to play with the webcam wire. Um, they, uh, I got these for less than $10 after the fees and everything on the Goodwill auction site. And I'll probably sell them together. And I think I'll get about 30 bucks for them, 30, 40 bucks. Let's see, this I picked up at an estate sale. It is a welder's helmet. Now, partly I picked it up because it's a vintage welder's helmet. Here's the uh, label on the inside. You can see that. Um, and, you know, vintage type equipment, uh, mechanics equipment and stuff can do well. Um, that flips up, but I also partly picked it up. I paid for five dollars for it. Um, we've got the solar eclipse coming up in two months, and you can use if it's the right glass, so dark enough, you can use welder's helmet to welder glass to be able to look at the sun. So, I'm not sure if I'm going to sell this or keep it for myself because uh, the the total it's going to be a total eclipse over a good part of the United States. If you're not aware, you probably are. It's been all over the news. But um, here in my area, it's it's going to be in the high 90% complete. But if I just drive on up to Wyoming, it's going to be 100%. So I'm doing that because I am a, I'm a science nerd and I'm starting to be buff. And um, so anyway, I'll probably keep this for myself just to have uh, to be able to do one more item to be looking. Not sure. Uh, I may be going with some friends. Um, people will have telescopes. It's, it's a big deal. So um, I may keep that myself, but at the same time, I could market it if I wanted to sell it as being usable for the upcoming solar eclipse. And um, it could possibly give it some higher value. Um, but like I said, I'm probably going to keep it myself and then I'll sell it afterwards. And uh, just as a collectible or a welder who actually needs one of these. So that's kind of why I picked that up. And that's your little science astronomy uh, spiel for the day. Um, all right, at the same garage sale, I picked up a bunch of dollhouse furniture, vintage dollhouse furniture from the 50s. Various brands, but there's a lot of um, one particular brand. Uh, it starts with an R, and I don't remember what the name is. Um, of course, you think I can see one of the tabs now? There it is. Renoir. So a lot of it is Renoir 1950s dollhouse furniture. It has several bags. So the bags range. Some of them were a dollar a bag. One was eight dollars. One was seven dollars. But uh, vintage or dollhouse furniture and vintage dollhouse furniture can do really well. Funny thing is, I've got a bunch of dollhouse furniture down in my basement. I think I've had for like two years. Have not gotten around to listening it. You know, one of those little death piles. Don't judge me. We all have them. Um, well, maybe uh, socially awkward, so is uh, Sarah. I, I don't think you usually have um, death piles. You tend to run out of stuff to list. I don't know how you do that. I always thought if that was the case, I wasn't doing it right. But anyway, um, I've always got, you know, stuff like this. Large lots that 
for whatever reason, I just don't sit down and list. Probably because I have so much other stuff that's easier to list. But now I will because I've got even more and I've got to get it out. And actually, I'm going to list a lot of it on Etsy. I'm trying to get my Etsy store built up, as I've said. Um, and this will be good stuff to put up. Some of it I can sell individual pieces, and then there'll be some that are lots where the individual pieces individually don't sell as much. So dollhouse furniture, keep an eye out for it, um, especially the older stuff. You know, look for damage. A lot of the stuff I did buy this time does have damage. A couple of the bags, I think that's why they were a dollar. They're damaged pieces, but they'll still sell. I'll put them in the lot, and uh, either the dollhouse people can try and repair them or, you know, do what they do. So I'm not at all into dollhouses. I'm just into selling the stuff. Uh, let's see, I picked this up for $5, overpaid on it, but I got it partly thinking I might use it. It's one of those phone holders, car phone holders, and it goes right into the vent. I have a car holder, but I kind of don't like it because where it sits on the dash, it partially blocks my view for, through the windshield. So I thought maybe I'd try this one. If I decide to sell it, it's going for $13.14 on Amazon. Make a little bit of profit, not much. And that's the four piece and everything. So I think in the end, I'd probably end up getting about eight bucks and I paid five for it so it's only like three dollar profit so I paid too much for it but I was also buying it thinking that I'd be keeping it for myself so uh, also at the estate sale a vintage personal calculator I always pick up like the uh, vintage drafting stuff um, slide rules but this I hadn't seen before it's metal and I haven't actually looked to see how it works yet. It's got the instructions, though, so I can figure it out. And the little case. Paid a dollar for it. Um, I've actually looked it up. It's not a whole lot of value. Maybe 10 bucks. Again, I'll put it on Etsy. Uh, maybe get a little bit more. It's actually got, I just noticed now, a little uh, a uh, stencil. I guess you could say like an original. Um, not stencil, but uh, you know, like you use with the... Uh, your uh, iPhones and stuff, you can have the little touch thing. But I guess you use this and it goes in the holes that are in there. So I don't know. I'll check it out since I am a science nerd. I like looking at the vintage uh, math type stuff. So <clears throat> pick that up for a buck. Uh, let's see here. Now the estate auction. Actually, I need to move this. Uh, it was at an estate auction. Hold on just a second. Let me grab this again. Okay. All right. Sorry about that. Uh, on online estate auction thing that I, I pick up stuff from, I picked up a, an electronics lot. It had a bunch of different electronics in it. Now, it had three Kindles in it. Um, one of which is a really good one. It's the Kindle DX. It's not a Kindle of Fire. It's the Kindle DX Graphite, and it's going for about 150 bucks. Now, I paid $54 after fees and taxes for everything. So that one item takes care of that plus my profit. But then there are a bunch of other items in it as well. Okay, so a Polaroid camera. You know, a lot of people pick these up. They are sought after. But the big kicker on this one is it's got an unopened package of film. And it's a buy two, get one bonus pack. So it's three packs of film inside. This is the money. Um, and uh, so that, um, don't, I don't think I'd sell it on Amazon because I don't know the condition of the film inside. I'm assuming it's okay. I'm sure it's in a blacked out sealed package and everything. But it'll on eBay, it's going for about 30 bucks. So... And then the camera as well, I need to uh, to check. And I've already, there was actually some film inside. So I've actually tested it and it works. So that was in the lot. Bose headphones. Um, Bose headphones and they are model TP-1A. And I, I looked them up, um, I forget how much they were, but they were probably like 20, 30 bucks. So, and you know, from this point, it, it's all profit from this lot. So this is a nice one. 
Plantronics Wireless VoIP Headset. Uh, it's in the original box. It has been used, but it looks complete in the original box. And this on Amazon in used condition is going for almost $100, about $93 before fees. Um, so uh, I have to pull it out, out, make sure it is complete. Um, not sure how to test it. But anyway, I'll look through it all and hopefully I'll be, you know, be getting somewhere around 80, 90 bucks for it. So maybe a little bit more since it's in the original box. All right, this radio was a pleasant surprise. I saw it in the pictures, the online auction. Didn't think too much of it. It's Panasonic, obviously a retro old uh, radio. But I looked it up and it's actually got some good value. I think it's going for about 50 bucks on eBay. Um, it's kind of got that retro orange color. It also comes in the, that classic you know, 50s green, kind of that olive green, and I think the pink. Um, but this is the orange version. I haven't tested it yet. I do need to plug it in and test it, but it's just a radio, so um, uh, we'll see. And if it doesn't work, it'll sell for parts. But, oh, that was a nice little bonus. Timex alarm clock. Actually had some value. I looked it up. I think it was about 20 bucks, 15, 20 bucks. Uh, let's see, did I plug this in? I don't think I plugged it in yet, but it's a Timex. They keep on ticking, right? So uh, every little bit more is profit. And then these, if the little earbud earbuds that comes in the kit with a bunch of different ear piece attachments so I guess whatever type of earbud you like to use it's got different styles didn't really think too much of it but you know I look up everything and when you pick up lots at auctions and stuff go through everything I have been shocked at what is sellable stuff that I totally would have thought was trash but I have learned through doing this check everything and I checked these the brand is clip clips I have no idea how to pronounce that Clip SCH. Um, and they actually have some value. Uh, I forget exactly how much, but it would have been at least 15, 20 bucks. And the fact that it's got the extra little ear pieces. So that was a nice little find, and that'll be easy to ship. So, and a real good sell through rate. And then there was um, a bunch of cords. Of course, the cords that go with the Kindles. And I'm not going to show the Kindles because they're all around my house charging. They all work. I've already wiped. I've already got them charged up enough to where I was able to wipe them clean because they still had the previous owner's info on it. So I did factory resets and got all his information out of it. And uh, they all work fine. They're just get, uh, getting their full charge now. So those were real nice. And then a whole bunch of other random chargers, cords that always come in handy. Nice to have a box of those sitting around. So when you pick up electronics, if you don't have a cord, maybe you'll have one in your stash. Um, and then a couple of uh, lights, um, halogen type lights that I can always use around here. And then I actually have them in my purse. I can't pull it out, but there's a um, portable phone charger or tablet charger that I've considered getting in the past because when you're out on the road, I try to keep you know it charged in the car, but sometimes I'm in places, so I'm not actually in the car yet, and eat up the phone battery. This is one of these portable ones. You charge it up, and then when you need it, it plugs into your phone and gives your phone a charge. I already tested it. works great with my phone. It actually sells for about 30 bucks on eBay, but I'm going to keep it. Um, and that'll be something I can definitely use down the road and be nice to have as, you know, the phone battery, you know, tends to start getting worse the older it gets. I've got a newer phone battery now, but um, it'll still come in handy. So that was nice to find. So there are a couple little items like that that I'm keeping a uh, Bluetooth for my phone I'm keeping because I lost mine and I kept thinking I'd find it. have not been able to find it. So I need a new Bluetooth so I can talk hands-free on the car. You, don't, you can talk. You don't have to be hands-free here in Colorado. Uh, but I would imagine at some point that's going to come. Although you don't have to wear a helmet when you're riding a motorcycle either. So I don't know. They're just not in the safety around here, I guess. I don't know. So, but anyway, I don't like, I prefer to have, uh, be hands-free when I'm talking on the phone. So 
Um, it works. I've already paired it with my phone. Um, I'm not sure how much I like. It's not the kind that actually goes in your ear. It just sits on your ear. So I don't know how well I'm going to hear with it. So I'll have to test it on a phone call, which I haven't been able to do yet. But that was in there. Um, it, it was like a $10, $15 item if I wanted to sell it. So that all adds up. So the $54 electronics lot that I picked up, um, it's probably upwards of three, dollars $400 and stuff that I'll be selling, and as well as a couple items that I'm keeping for myself. So that's always nice. So that's it for the hard items. I'm going to move on to the few clothing items I got. So if you're not into clothing, thank you for watching. If you like the video, hit the thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed, hit the subscribe button. Um, I also do sales results videos, although I did not get to one this week. I will get one out in the next day or two. So anyway, on to the clothes. Um, this I picked up at... The, some of this I got at the thrift store yesterday. Since I didn't do that well at garage sales this weekend, I treated myself to the thrift store yesterday. And um, this was half off, so I paid $3 for it. It's a Nike Golf Performance Dry Fit. Real nice condition, blue striped. But it has this little Disney um, logo on it. At least I think it's Disney. It looks like Mickey Mouse to me. I don't know if it's Disney Resorts, if it's Disney World. I have to look up their logos. Uh, Bill, my brother, if you're watching, I know you're a Disney expert. If you know which logo that is, let me know. And uh, But regardless, even with or without that, it's a nice shirt for three bucks. Um, the, the Nike Dry Fit Performance Golf shirts do well. And probably, you know, like 20 bucks, but with if that is a Disney logo, which I'm still not 100% sure, maybe a little bit more, maybe 25. Ralph Lauren um, paid $4 extra large. But the kicker on this one is this, a, yeah, the kicker on this one, why I wanted to get it is it had the Ralph Lauren Yacht Club flag logo on the window. So it wasn't the pony. Um, and so that one's harder to find. Uh, so I think I uh, should be able to do it. So it's a good size, extra large, nice color, real good condition. I check the color. I always check the color on your shirts. Look for stains. I try not to pick up the shirts that have any sort of wear in the collar unless the shirt is particularly high end. Um, and then I might a little bit of wear, not a lot. This was a brand I'd never heard of, but the tag looked high end. It's called Zara Man Denim Couture. Here's the uh, the label. And it's got the floral paisley pattern. So I looked it up. I liked what the comments were showing. Um, actually, I paid up for this one. This wasn't a half off. In fact, in fact you know what? On this Ralph Lauren, I, pay, I actually paid $8 for the Ralph Lauren shirt. The blues were not half off this weekend. So I paid $8 for it. But, but I did look up the comps, and I'll make at least 20 on it. So um, not as much profit as I would like, but I've not ever seen that logo before, so I didn't want to leave it. Same with this. I paid up for it. The comps seemed to um, tell me to go ahead and get it. But also the thing is it's a slim fit. So slim fits are always popular. But that floral, I looked it up, the floral of that brand did did pretty well. So I think it was 2025, but I got it as much for the education as well, which is why I was willing to pay the eight bucks. So it's getting it. I'll do more research on it. I'll list it, see how quickly it sells, and then I'll know whether it's a brand to pick up in the future or not. Canali. Canali is a very high end brand for uh, sport coats, blazers, as well as the shirts. Typical dress shirt, blue. Here's the brand. Um, I did pay half for that, so I paid five dollars for that. It's two, well, the size, it, oh, that's this was the good kicker on it. Really good brand, good condition, collar looks good, but it's a size 18 and a half, which is very, is a pretty good sized shirt. So it's got that going for it as well. So for five bucks, um, hopefully I can get maybe 30 out of it, 25 to 30. This jacket I picked up at a garage sale. It was a charity thing being run by a bunch of um, older people and I was walking around and just didn't have much, couldn't find anything. And being a charity, um, I wanted to find something. Finally, I found this coat in their rack of clothing. North Face, uh, puffer. It's bad size, it's small. 
Um, but there's the, it's a women's small, but it's got the, the fur, the faux fur lined hood. It's got the hood. Um, it's puffer. I haven't actually checked to see if it's down. It's probably just polyester. Yeah, it's just polyester. Uh, faux fur. Um, but it's a real nice jacket and I asked them how much and she says 650. And she thought about it before she said she thought thought and the 650. Uh, why they came up with a 650 instead of six dollars, five dollars, ten dollars, I don't know. But I said fine. Maybe she thought I was going to try and talk her down um, to five or something. But I usually don't talk down at charity events. I mean, unless they're real overpriced and trying to get it down to a decent price for me. But six six fifty for this jacket. I had to pay that in the thrift store, so I'm gonna go ahead and pay it there. So. And then this I picked up at a garage sale, Horny Toad. I think I've seen, shown this brand before. I don't think the company is called Horny Toad anymore, um, for obvious reasons. Um, paid $3 for it. It's just a real nice white fleece vest, jacket, full zip, pockets. It was real nice. And uh, being that Horny Toad brand, it's an extra large. I don't know if that's a women's or a men's extra large. I'm going to guess that's a women's extra large because there's no way that's a men's extra large. So women's extra large, real nice condition. Um, for $3, I went ahead and got that. And now some pants. Found another pair of dojo jeans. Uh, I got these at the thrift store yesterday. And there's the back pocket with the Easy to spot stitching for dojo. There's the uh, where it says dojo on the inside. The um, I did forget to look, but I'm looking now, and it's it looks good for authenticity on the label. And um, I paid. These were originally twenty. They had them marked originally twenty. I actually found them when I was checking out. They were on the. Uh, top brand rack by the uh, cashiers and as I was in line I just happened to, to look and then I spotted it. They originally wanted 20 but it was pink and half off so I got it for 10 which I will because the last pair of dojos I got I sold for 50 so I'll pay 10 um, for that brand. Definitely not going to lose my money on them. A uh, pair of Gap 1969. The key these is their acid wash. Acid washes uh, it's got it's got its following. I loved them. I loved them back in the 80s, uh, but there are still people that uh, wear them now. They're the always skinny, which kind of cracks me up. They're size 27, so they're pretty they're pretty skinny to begin with. If you're wearing this size jeans, you don't need jeans to make you skinny. You are skinny. So uh, anyway, I paid uh, three dollars for them. So Gap 1969, so not a, a great high brand, but the right style. Can do okay, you know, 10 to 15 bucks. Um, I think for these, I'd probably get 15 plus shipping because of that uh, the acid wash. Let's see, BKE. I'm doing pretty well with the BKE, but the kicker on these is that thick stitching that is popular now, apparently. In fact, as I started looking at people uh, wearing fashionable jeans, yep, most of them are wearing this thick white stitch. So kind of keep an eye out for the thick white stitch in the decent brands and BK is a decent brand and I got this for five dollars so it's got the distressing the fading it's got distressing on the legs it's got distressing on the pockets so right. these are not your daughter jeans um where did I get these I must have got these at a garage sale yeah I got these at a garage sale for a buck uh, decent saw, or actually I don't know what the size is because it's what I don't like. Tag has been torn out, but they were only a dollar. They look a decent size. They're faded black. I think they're faded black. Yeah, faded black. So for a dollar I went ahead and grabbed them. Actually, no, I didn't pay a dollar. I paid 50 cents for them. That's right. All the clothing was 50 cents at this garage sale. So for 50 cents, I went ahead and grabbed it, even with the tag being torn out. Normally, I don't like that, but um, I'll actually try them on and see if they fit me. Although I think they may be a little small for me. I do like that brand. Though. These I picked up. 
at the same garage sale. So I got these for either 50 cents or a dollar. She might have charged a dollar on these because they are denim. They have overalls, which can do well. The brand is Texas Tough. I haven't even looked up the brand. I just got them because they were acid wash denim bib overalls, women's, which are popular, and they were a buck or less, 50 cents or a dollar. So I wasn't going to leave one behind. Hopefully I can get 25, 30 for them. And then at the same sale for 50 cents, a pair of linen, women's linen pants. The brand is Jamaica Bay. But I got them because they're linen. They are pink. I looked them over to see if there was any stains. I'm going on a run when I pick up linen. They always tend to end up having stains on them. So I'm going to go ahead and wash them. I don't see anything, but I'm going to wash them anyway. And they're kind of a uh, crop cut. But uh, for 50 cents, 100% linen, I grabbed those. So that is it. Or Actually, I did pick up a couple of bras as well. One in the tie. Let me grab those. Occasionally pick up large size bras, grosses my friends out, them selling used bras, but they gotta be, they gotta basically look like they were never worn. Anywhere, I'm not gonna buy them. They do get sold as, as used. But, uh, Kasik, I know I saw Nicole State's Place, uh, talking about that brand, and it was a leopard print, and a paid 250. And the size is a 42C, so it's a large woman and average cup size. Uh, but with the Lippard print, the good brand for 250, I wasn't really bad, in really good condition. There's no wear whatsoever. And same with this, no wear whatsoever, no staining, no discoloration. And it's a, a bally or bally, I don't know how you pronounce it, 38 double D, just a basic white bra. So, and I got that for a couple bucks. I don't know where the tag is. Oh, there it is. Two fifty. So that's the bras. And then I got one tie. Normally I don't get ties there because they have them overpriced, but this one was half off, so it ended up being two fifty. It's a Jerry Garcia tie. I like buying those, and I'm putting together a lot so I can sell um, some lots of these Jerry Garcia ties. Some of the Jerry Garcia ties can do well individually. Um, that, Really cute pattern, so I'll put that in my lots. I think I actually have enough now to put a lot up, so I need to go grab those and get that lot up and see how well it does because I haven't actually put any up yet. So I need to do it and see how well it sells. So that is it. That is what I got this week. Um, I, it seems like a lot, but it was over several days and various um, methods of picking. So that's what I got. Hopefully next week will be better. I hope you all did well. Uh, and if you like the video, hit the thumbs up, hit the subscribe button if you're not subscribed so you can catch more. I'll get a sales results video out here in the next couple of days. And um, I think that is it. You all have a great week. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you for the comments. If you have any comments, please, um, or let's see comments and I will get back to you. If you have any questions and uh, I'll see you next time.